to another video. My name is Ryan, and this video is about a film photography self-assignment. Recently, I watched a video by Willem Verbeek about the value of giving yourself a self-assignment as a photographer in order to help you grow creatively, and it really struck a chord for me. I'll leave a link to that below in the description because I think it's a great watch and I encourage you to check it out if you're interested. It inspired me to give myself a self-assignment, and this video is about the process of defining that assignment, about making the photos, and about printing some of them in the darkroom. So if that all sounds interesting to you, then grab a drink and stick around. So I wanted to leverage some of the benefits of working from home and do something that I didn't have to travel for or take time off for, especially because this is just for me and no one is paying me to do this. I came up with the idea of photographing the commuters on the Boston Tea in the morning because I knew that if I woke up early this was something I could spend an hour on and then be back in time to log on by 8am. I also think limitations are a really important tool in developing yourself as a creative and so I wanted to lean into that and place a whole bunch of limitations on myself for this project. I chose to use only one camera, the Leica M3, one lens, the Fuji 3.5cm f2, and one film, Cat Labs X-Film 320 Pro. I thought it would be a neat idea to photograph Boston commuters on a film developed in partnership with a Boston-based film company. I also think that X-Film 320 looks spectacular at ISO 800 and I knew that I was going to have to push the film a little bit because of the dim interiors of the downtown tea stations. I also made it a point to shoot in the same location every day and that was the downtown crossing tea station in Boston um, and all of the different lines that converged there. I limited myself to one roll of film per day and that helped with the time so I could get back in time to log on for work, uh, but it's also another limitation. So I started Monday morning and I shot one roll a day through Thursday, then I developed the film Thursday night, and then I brought those four rolls into the darkroom on Friday, made contact sheets of each roll, and chose one selection from each day to print larger. Now I'll show you some of the video that I took while making these photos and then I'll take you to the darkroom where I will show you the printing process and the final results.
I developed all four roles on Thursday evening using Rodenol as the developer in a 1 part to 50 dilution for 28 and a half minutes, which is what I have found works well for this film when rated at 800. On Friday, I took the negatives to the darkroom and started by printing contact sheets of each roll. Even though I've been showing some scans throughout this video so far, I still had not seen any of these images yet. So the entire process would be analog. I've been shooting and developing my own film for quite some time, and I've been printing in the darkroom for several years. But my workflow thus far has always been to shoot a roll of film, develop it at home, scan it at home, make selections from the digital inversions, and finally take those selections to the darkroom once I had several images from many rolls that I wanted to print. I think the digitization step can increase the efficiency of my workflow and helps maximize my time and energy spent in the darkroom. But I wanted to disrupt that because disruptions, like limitations, can sometimes help you see things differently or things that you might have missed. I quickly rinsed and dried the four contact sheets and made selections from them rather than from the digital inversions. Next, it was time to print the four selections larger. I used my Fujinon 50mm EX enlarging lens for these prints. I started with a test strip with several steps of exposure variation which helps to save paper and make for easier comparison between exposures for a print. Next it was time to make a final larger print of each negative. I love watching prints come to life from a blank piece of paper in the developer bath, and somehow it never gets old. I scanned the darkroom prints on a flatbed scanner to show in this video. Next, I ran the prints through a squeegee to get most of the water off before sticking them in a dry mount press for a few minutes. I like to try and compare what I might have chosen from a digital scan compared to what I did choose from the contact sheets. What do you think of the darkroom prints versus the scanned negatives? Let me know in the comments below.
Street photography is not my primary focus as a photographer. I'm more into landscapes and botanical stuff. But I do like the idea of making street photographs and I find a lot of inspiration in the work of some contemporary as well as historical photographers who focused on street for their work. I shot most of these images at 1 15th of a second and f4 because f4 on a 35 millimeter lens is a pretty forgiving focal length still and allows you to be quick and fast. 1 15th of a second also has the benefit of giving easy access to motion blur while still being something that I can reliably handhold without camera shake if I stop quickly. This motion blur is also frequently just enough to obscure the identity of a person but still maintain their identity as a, as a human and I think that's helpful for the context of the images as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and if you made it this far, please give this video a thumbs up and do consider subscribing. It's really helpful for a small channel like mine that is just starting out and it's totally free. Until the next one, 